All I hear is talking, I don't sweat that. If they don't trust me, yeah, I respect that. If she need on the ride, do oh, I bet that? Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Ooh, I slide for my people, don't forget that. Here's an EV you probably haven't seen in person yet. I ran into this pre-production canoe while an engineer was charging it at the Denton, Texas Electrify America station outside of Fort Worth. What you're looking at is the Canoe Lifestyle Vehicle, which according to Canoe's website is due to launch in late 2022. What makes this minivan special outside the fact it's an EV is its visibility. Unlike probably every other current production vehicle, the canoe gives you an almost entirely unobstructed view ahead thanks to a glass window where the dashboard and hood of most cars would be, which canoe appropriately calls its street view window. The engineer driving the canoe told me one of the things they heard from professional drivers is they wanted a vehicle with no blind spots up front, which the canoe delivers, making it easy to see pedestrians and judge front end distances. While the canoe engineer I spoke with was very knowledgeable and friendly, he was not allowed to do an official on camera interview. But canoe did give him permission to give me a quick interior tour and a brief ride. Please keep in mind, what you are seeing is a pre-production vehicle, so it's still being refined and tweaked. Run me through it if you would. There's lights and brightness, like headlights on, headlights off, you have automatic high beams, fog lamps, interior lights, pegboard lights, you have different color options, you have climate, airflow intensity, cabin protection, you have Bluetooth, you have Wi-Fi, here is the music, there is phone. Android Auto and uh, Apple CarPlay? Uh, right now, no, but in future, yes. But you can connect to Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. uh, the future plan is to have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. While many of the controls are located within the touch screen, there are also separate dual zone climate controls in the center of the dashboard strip. So this is like AC. This is the rear AC. And then you can like sync. Here. So. By the way, that flicker you see in the speed indicator, it was caused by my camera. It is perfectly solid and legible to the human eye. It will be powered by a rear wheel drive motor. Canoe says it will go to 20 to 80 percent of charge in 28 minutes on a DC fast charger. Although I haven't seen any reports on what the peak charging speed will be. It also comes with redundant drive-by-wire steering and 12 airbags. The pre-production version I got a ride in was outfitted like a premium edition would be, with the panoramic glass roof and wraparound seating for seven. The canoe has well over 16,000 worth of orders from Walmart, Zeba, and Kingby for its vehicles. The U.S. Army is also looking at its multi-purpose platform. The newest vehicle offers even greater space and flexibility for fleet owners with the same unique technologically advanced performance of our original LDV-130, says Tony Aquila, chairman and CEO, Canoe. As we build out our family of vehicles over time, we expect to continue to bring forward models and options that improve safety, reliability, performance and are zero emission. The LDV-190 shares the same multi-purpose platform, MPP, as the LDV-130 but has a more beefed-up suspension system to handle the increased payload of Class 2 vehicles. Drivers will notice it features the same dynamic handling and performance as the LDV-130, courtesy of Canoe's patented steering by wire system. Despite its increased payload load capacity and body length, the wheelbase and low center of gravity is maintained from the LDV-130. This ensures predictable driving behavior at all speeds while maintaining maneuverability at slow speeds and in urban areas. The LDV-190 also features a unique and patent-pending interchangeable rear cargo cartridge offering customer the ability to change between barn door, tambour door and a split tailgate configuration that incorporates a loading ramp easier loading of large objects. 
An optional step bumper provides protection and additional access to the rear cargo area. The cargo area has been enlarged to 172 cubic feet of space behind the standard bulkhead, with more cargo room available in the front cabin on the optional single seat version. Based on Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is J.H. How y'all doing, Postal Family? Is everybody good? Everybody cool? Are you clean, crisp? Are you feeling iry today? This hat. Tina made it. Video description. This shirt. Show it to you just because she's looking this up. Ooh. I'm a short guy, so just look. You see it? I'll see it. Yeah, huh? You see? Huh? Let's move this out the way. I'm modeling, yeah. Oh, it's fresh. Okay, now that I got that out the way. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Now that I got that out the way. Keep my keep my video voice going on. So, so what'd you guys think? What'd you guys think of that um uh canoe? What'd you think of the canoe? Um, I'm sure there's not gonna be a lot of people that like it. But now you get a first-hand look at what is coming. So from what I, what I gathered, there was six that they picked up. Somebody wrote that in the comments. I tell you guys I read every comment. And um, that was six that they gave the post office to start with. And there's going to be a ton more. Like I said before, the facility is being built in Oklahoma City. So it's not if, it's when they get, you know, distributed. Somebody say, you saying the word wrong. Distributed. Distributed? Distributed? You know what the damn word is. I'm just, just dragging this on a little bit. Ain't got much to say. I just, I don't want to go back and forth about the EVs anymore. I'm just putting it out there because half of you love it, half of you hate it. I'm just sharing the information. And one of my mans, one of my, just so you guys know, one of my mans, he knows who he is. He wrote me the other day. He's like, man, is uh, management getting in your ear? And I'm like, what you mean by that? He said, they ain't telling you to push a narrative? No, absolutely not. And, you know, I text him. But just so you guys realize, everything that I put on this channel, 99% of it is from you guys sending me articles. Y'all send me the stuff. I read up on it and I give you an opinion. And the other stuff I read up on and I give you an opinion or I've experienced it and I give you an opinion. My opinion don't really matter. What matters is, is I read everybody's comments and then I gather everybody's comments and then I put it back out there. That's it. That's it. It's just like, you know, data, data. What the data says right now for the carriers is they're pissed because they don't have any real contract or they don't know what's going on with their contract. The carriers wish there was a one tier system. The carriers wish there was more pay. And how do I, I've never carried mail. That's because of what you guys tell me. Right? Right. So, I mean, it is what it is. So don't think that. Okay. Yeah. All right. I think it's time for me to go. Bye bye now. Unexpected expenses stressing you out? Get the money you need now with Loans for Feds, a program designed specifically for federal employees. Bad credit is not a problem. Application is fast and easy with same-day approvals. Apply now.